I want to talk with you about having a heart that understands. A heart that understands. And that thought came to me as I was reading through Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 to 15, which says, The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their ears, hear with, see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. So a few weeks ago, I talked about having eyes that see. And we can have eyes that see when we pray just three simple prayers. Number one was, open my eyes. Number two was, help me to see what you see. And then number three is, you know, praying to God, Lord, help me to see as you see. All right, so we have eyes that see. How do we get that? Number one, we pray, open my eyes. Number two, we say, God, would you help me to see what you see? And then three, help me to see as you see, that same compassion that you have when you see. And then the next week after that, we talked about having ears that hear. And how do we have ears that actually hear? Well, number one, we got to push the mute button. If you've ever been on a Zoom call and somebody in the, the Zoom room hasn't pushed the mute button, all you hear is the noises that surround them and occasionally their voice and their cough. And all they have to do is just push that mute button. All right. And that's the same for us. If we're going to hear, well, then we have to push mute. We have to actually open our ears and be willing to listen. Number two is that we listen to God. All right. We listen to what he's saying. He, he wants to have relationship with you. He wants to speak with you. And then we talked about having ears that would listen to people. Okay, so ears that hear, what does that look like? Ears that hear is number one, we push the mute button. Number two, we listen to God. Number three, we actually listen to people. Well, now today I want to talk about having a heart that understands. Well, what does that even mean? And it's interesting because as I was thinking about this particular verse from memory, um, and I was trying to quote it in my mind, I, I remember the part, of course, having eyes that see, ears that hear. And I thought, I, I really thought that the verse said, in a mind that understands. But then I, I looked at the verse and I realized that Jesus didn't say, he didn't tell us to have a mind that understands, but he told us to have a heart that understands. And so, you know, I looked it up and I, in the original language, and I see that even in the Greek language, the word that Jesus used was cardios, okay? Cardios. So you can hear the word cardiology in that Greek word. And so there's no doubt Jesus is talking about the word heart. Now, you know, it's interesting, most translations go ahead and use that word heart in the English. So it's Greek, cardios, and they'll use the, um, the English word um, heart, of course, and they should, because that's the word in the Greek. But some translations, uh, just a few that I, that I noticed, actually translate that word cardios to the word mind. And they go ahead and they translate Jesus as saying that we should have eyes that see, ears that hear, and a mind that understands. And, you know, I, I won't get after those translations too much. I can understand what they mean because maybe the translators, as they saw, as they, as they saw Jesus' words and were trying to figure out how to translate it from Greek into modern day English, they thought, well, we you know, we don't understand with our heart. Um, we actually understand with our mind. But I feel like they're missing the point. I feel like they're, they're really missing out on what Jesus is trying to communicate to us when he says, have eyes that see, have ears that hear and have a heart that understand. You see, Jesus intentionally chose to use the word heart as a place of understanding. Um, and not only that, he's actually quoting a prophet. It, just as we read in Matthew, Jesus says, as Isaiah said. So Jesus is actually quoting the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah also used the word heart. He talked about the word, he talked about the heart as being that place of understanding. And not only that, um, if you look ahead into the book of Acts, chapter 28, toward the end, one of the last things that is said in the book of Acts is Paul quoting 
the book of Isaiah, just as Jesus did, also using the word heart as that place of understanding. All right, so we have Isaiah, we have Jesus, we have the Apostle Paul, all talking to us, all challenging us to have a heart that understands, having eyes that see, ears that hear, and a heart that understand. So what does it mean to have a heart that understands? Well, I want to talk about three aspects to having an understanding heart. All right, just three aspects. Here's the first aspect. Number one, heart understanding goes beyond sight and sound. All right, number one is heart understanding goes beyond sight and sound. Now, just a couple of clarifications to that statement. All right, first clarification is this. Heart understanding doesn't eliminate sight and sound. All right, it doesn't eliminate sight and sound. Jesus says, again, what does he say? He says, I want you to see with your eyes. I want you to hear with your ears. And I want you to understand with your heart. So if we eliminate our sight and we eliminate our ears, what we're left with is just emotionalism, all right? And that can get, get us into a dangerous spot if we try to understand simply by feeling, all right, without taking into account what we see, what we hear. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? So our eyes and ears definitely help us understand, all right? So heart understanding doesn't eliminate sight and sound. That's the first clarification. The second clarification is this. Heart understanding isn't limited to sight and sound. All right? So it doesn't, it doesn't eliminate it. That was the first clarification. The second one is, is that it, it, it's not limited to sight and sound. You see, if understanding, if understanding what is going on around us, if understanding the person that you're in relationship with, uh, the person you're talking to, understanding your relationship with God, understanding what's happening in our world during this coronavirus pandemic, if, it's, if, under, if understanding is limited to what we see and hear, what we're left with is not emotionalism, but now it's called empiricism, all right? Empiricism, and, and, and that can be just as dangerous and just as bad as emotionalism. You see, empiricism is the theory that all knowledge is derived from our sense experience. Okay, think about that. Empiricism is the theory that all knowledge, everything we know, is derived from, is gained by um, our sense experience. Okay, well the fact is, I have nothing against the empirical method, all right, but, and, and, the, and the fact is, empiricism is a great way of gaining knowledge, but empiricism has one big major flaw, all right, and here's its major flaw. Empiricism cannot be proven by empirical methods, all right? Because empiricism is simply a theory or a method of gaining knowledge about the world around us. And it's a great one. It's what we see, what we hear, what we can, what we can sense, and we can receive that information, process it, right? But the problem is you cannot prove the empirical method by using the empirical method because the empirical method is not something you can see or hear or touch, right? Because it's a theory. So that's the first aspect of heart understanding. Heart understanding goes beyond sight and sound. It goes beyond sight and sound. Now, it doesn't eliminate sound, sight and sound because that would be emotionalism. And it doesn't, it's not limited to sight and sound because that would be empiricism. All right. So heart understanding takes in what it sees and what it hears, but it goes beyond that for a deeper understanding. All right. And so when Jesus says, um, if only you would have eyes that see and ears that hear and a heart that understands. All right. He's not discounting sight and sound. He's saying, take that in, but then he's calling us to deeply understand uh, what he's communicating to us, what's going on in the world around us, uh, what's happening in the relationships that we're surrounded by, um, if we're married or if we're parents or just uh, roommates, whatever it might happen to be. All right. Now, here's the second aspect, okay, of having a heart understanding. All right. Second aspect is this. Heart understanding relies on every sense. Okay. Heart understanding relies on every sense. You see, in school, we're taught that we have five senses. And what are those five senses? Well, we have the sense of sight, um, hearing, we have uh, touch, we have um, sound. Oh, I already said that. Let me just read what I got here and try to, instead of trying to think it through, all right? We've got sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell. 
But in reality, many people say that we have more than just even these five senses. Uh, I was reading just the other day that there's another sense that some people believe we had. It's, it's, we have. It's called the sense of proprioception. All right, proprioception. It's the sense of space. It's the sense. It's that. It's that ability that we have uh, to know where we are in space, okay? We're, we, we have a sense of where our body is in space. So in other words, if I close my eyes, I can still touch my nose. I don't have to struggle to figure out where my nose is. I can touch it with my eyes closed. That's the sense of proprioception. My body has the sense of where it is in space, all right? And that's why somebody who is suspected of being drunk while driving, um, they'll be asked to do that very test. They'll, they'll be asked if they can touch their nose with their eyes closed because they know that that scent, you know, policemen know that that sense of proprioception might be a little off if they're under the influence of alcohol. All right. So some say we might even have those six senses and some suggest maybe we even have more physical senses than that. All right. But here's the thing. Don't forget that as a creation of God, we are more than just flesh and blood. We are more than just body, okay? The Bible teaches that we are actually body, soul, and spirit. And if we're body, soul, and spirit, and if our body has those at least five senses, sight, sound, touch, smell, taste, and maybe proprioception, other senses like that, if our body has senses, do you think that maybe your soul and your spirit has an ability to sense. Well, the Bible, I believe the Bible teaches that they do, right? Our soul and our spirit do have that ability to sense. Uh, Look what the Bible says about our spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. It says, The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. All right? The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Isn't that amazing? That our spirit has this ability to sense what the Holy Spirit is communicating to us. Okay, it's a, the, what this verse is telling us that if you are a child of God, if you have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord, right? You believe in Him in your heart. You believe that God raised Him from the dead, that He's forgiven you of your sins. The Bible says that we can have a witness of the Holy Spirit with our witness that we are God's children. All right, that tells me that our spirit has this ability to sense. What about our soul? Um, Our soul can be defined as our mind and our will and our emotions. Um, It's that part of us that can understand things at a deeper level. Um, I think of the story when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And I think of that story because the disciples, as they were many times, were very thick, were very slow to understand what Jesus was trying to, to do amongst them. So in John chapter 13, verse 12, It says here, when he had finished, speaking of Jesus, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. And then he asked this question. He says, do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. All right, so picture the scene. Jesus gets up from the table. Um, He takes out his robe. He wraps himself with a towel. He takes a basin of water. He goes around and he washes their feet. And uh, we don't know what kind of communication is happening, happening here. And it says, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes, returned to his place. And he says, do you understand what I have done for you? And if these guys were relying completely on their physical senses, they would have said something like this. You know, if they would have dared to answer, they just would have said, well, uh, you washed our feet. Right, And Peter even tried to stop Jesus. Maybe you know the story. Peter didn't understand. Right, He didn't understand what was taking place, and he tried to stop Jesus. Well, look at how Jesus describes what just took place. Jesus didn't say, well, I just washed your feet. No, in verse 14, he says this. He has a lesson. He says, here's what I'm trying to communicate to you. This is the, this is the understanding I want you to have. Verse 14. 13 and 14 of John 13, Jesus says, You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. Okay? And Jesus doesn't finish there, all right? Because if he finished right there, we would think, okay, the lesson is that we should have a practice of always washing one another's feet, right? Which is not a bad thing. 
But is that really what Jesus was trying to communicate on this, you know, one of these final teaching occasions that he had with his disciples? Well, is, is there more to it? And I believe there's more to it because of what Jesus says next in verse 15 and se- through 17. Jesus continues. He says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. You see, heart understanding helps us realize that Jesus was doing more than just washing feet. All right, Jesus' main concern that day wasn't that his disciples would have cleaner feet than, than when they had come in. All right, I'm sure you know, that was a great bonus. But if we, look, if we listen with our heart, if we say, all right, how does Jesus want me to understand this instance with my heart? Not just my eyes, not just by my ears, and not just even with my mind, but my heart. What does Jesus want me to understand? Well, he wants me to understand that everyone who comes after him, everyone who says, I want to follow you, Jesus. Um, I want to live as you lived. I want, to, I want to serve as you served. Well, then the lesson we receive from him washing feet was that anybody who comes after him must sacrificially serve one another in a spirit of love and respect. All right, no matter what our uh, position is, no matter what our authority level is, that if we're a follower of Jesus, that we serve one another sacrificially in a spirit of love and in a spirit of respect. All right, so here is the third aspect of heart understanding. Heart understanding, third aspect. Heart understanding is a gift from God. Heart understanding is a gift from God. You see, anybody can get better at understanding. I think anybody can understand the idea that understanding goes beyond what we can see and what we can hear. All right, we get that. All right, we can get better at it. But at some point, each one of us will hit a ceiling of limitation, a place where we're just not able to process in the way that God would have us to process. We're not able to understand in the way He would have us to understand. Think for a moment about the limits of your physical senses. Think about the last time you saw some sort of magic trick, uh, maybe in person or maybe on a, a YouTube video, you saw a magic trick. And the fact that you were fooled by the magic trick shows that your senses weren't enough. It shows that the, the hands of the magician were actually faster than your eyes. So your, your actual, you have physical limitations. And so if you have physical limitations, we must be limited in other aspects of who we are right? Our soul, um, our spirit, our ability to understand. And so we need a touch from God, all right? We need his help. You know, after Jesus Christ rose from the dead, we're told that his disciples couldn't even believe it, all right? It wasn't that they didn't understand what would happen, that had happened. Of course, that's true as well. They didn't understand. They couldn't process, but they couldn't even believe it. Luke chapter 24, verses 40 to 44 It says, and while they still did not believe it, they did not believe that the resurrection had taken place. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, because Jesus is there in their midst now. Jesus says, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses the prophets, and the Psalms. So Jesus, and I'm going to read one more verse. Jesus is saying to them, he says, I told you all about this already, but you didn't understand. You didn't get it. I actually told you, and we could right now go back in the Bible right now, and we could look at places where Jesus says, hey, the Son of Man, you know, is going to be crucified, and he's going to be buried, he's going to be in the ground for three days. But they just, they just didn't get it. They didn't process it. They didn't understand it. So look what happens in this next verse. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Speaking of Jesus, it says, Then he opened their minds so they could understand the Scriptures. He opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. They had to have a touch. They had to have a touch from God to to understand what he was doing, what Jesus was up to. All right, so we've been talking about having a heart, a heart that understands. And what does that even mean? 
Well, there's three aspects to having a heart that understands. Here's the first aspect, all right? Heart understanding goes beyond sight and sound. It goes beyond sight and sound. Now, it doesn't eliminate sight and sound. Um, if that were the case, then we would be basing our decisions strictly on emotion, right? Just strip, strictly by what we feel in our heart. And that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about going beyond it, right? Not eliminating, and we're not eliminating it. And we're not also we're also not talking about limiting it just to sight and sound, right? That's something called the empirical method, which has its place. Okay, there's a place for observing something and 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 creating a body of knowledge based on what we can see and hear. But heart knowledge is not limited to what we can see and hear. Okay. Heart understanding number two, here's the second aspect. Heart understanding uh, relies on every sense, okay? But not just the senses of our body, right? Those five senses or maybe six or seven or more that our body has, but of our soul and our spirit, all right? Remember, Romans says, his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, right? Jesus would do things amongst his disciples, teaching them lessons, and he would get to the end of the lesson. He'd say, do you understand what we've been talking about? Do you understand what I just did? Do you understand the parable, right? He wasn't looking for just a elementary school answer, just simply based on what they had just heard and observed. Oh, Jesus, you just washed our feet. No, that's not what he was trying to teach them. He was teaching them, no. He says, I want you to be servants who will serve one another, not lording it over others, but serving one another sacrificially in a spirit of love, in a spirit of honor, a spirit of respect. All right? So heart understanding, it relies on every sense. And number three, heart understanding is a gift from God. Okay, it's a, it's a gift from God. If we want to have a better ability to understand with our heart, okay, to understand what the Holy Spirit is doing in our times, to understand how the Holy Spirit might be speaking to us through the Word of God, okay, we need a touch from Him. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 12, it says, Eyes, ears to hear, and eyes to see, both are gifts from God. Okay, so just hearing and just sight, that's a gift. Okay, Proverbs also says something about our heart and a knowledge and understanding. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, it says, For the Lord grants wisdom, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. And so that's what we need. We need, we, need these, we need this gift from God, and that's what I want to pray. I want to pray at the end here that he would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. So Lord, I just pray that you would um, open up our ears, that we could hear, that you would open up our eyes, that, you could, that we could see, and Father, that you would open up our heart, that we could understand. Lord, we know that there's treasures in your scripture. Uh, there's, there's insight that your spirit would desire to give us as we live in these very confusing days where even the highest authorities in the land give conflicting uh, words of advice and conflicting commands. and um, It's just hard to know how to move forward in a day like this. And so what do we need? We need eyes that see, we need ears that hear, but we need a heart that understands. So would you touch our hearts? Would you, would you awaken our understanding? that we would be a people that understand the times, that we would be a, a people that understand you, your word, and what your spirit is communicating to your church. Lord, give us ears that are just pressed down to the, the ground so we can just hear every single thing that you would say to us. Our eyes would be open so you, we would understand every direction you would have us to go. And we pray this in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you listen to this whole talk, um, I just want to express my thanks to you for that. And um, I, I assume you're watching this on YouTube and you could do us really a great favor. Um, and I know a lot of YouTube channels ask you to do this. Every time you watch a YouTube channel, it seems like somebody is asking you to subscribe and to like and to comment. Um, but I do want to ask that you would um, like this, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to it. But even more importantly, if you would share this with somebody you think uh, might benefit from this message, as you know, our heart is to plant a church in Boulder, Colorado. And uh, one, of the way, one of the things we're trying to do is just to increase um, awareness of our presence, that we're here. And uh, since coronavirus is taking place in the whole world, um, one place we're trying to increase awareness is just online. So if you would share this video, um, encourage other people to maybe subscribe to this channel, that would be just a huge benefit, encouragement, and blessing to us. All right?
God bless you. May you have a heart, may you have a heart that understands. Amen.